be very interesting for our planet because right now an asteroid bigger than the MCG is heading towards us at 13 kilometres a second. As Alex Cullen reports, come Wednesday it will be closer to Earth than the moon. The clock is ticking. On November 8th of 2011, we have a 400 meter sized object coming within the orbit of the moon. 400 meters? Yeah. That's a big asteroid. It is indeed. <laughs> and if did that hit, we'd be in a lot of trouble. We would indeed, yes. The asteroid goes by the unromantic name of 2005 YU 55. It's the size of an aircraft carrier. And on Wednesday, it will pass between the Earth and Moon. There's no reason to panic. Here's what the impact of an asteroid a fraction of that size, just 50 metres in diameter, did 50,000 years ago. It's big, but this is the result of only a small asteroid impact. It hit travelling at almost 42,000 kilometres an hour and left this crater about a k and a half wide. Now, out here in the Arizona desert, it didn't do much damage. But just imagine what it would have done to a big city. What if one of these was to hit a city, for instance? It'd be lights out. So an object of that size were to explode over a, a city, it would uh, cause uh, devastation. Don Yeomans runs NASA's JPL Space Guard program. Last month, yeah. his team of asteroid trackers calculated there were nearly 20,000 near-Earth asteroids, some one kilometre in size. The largest could wipe out the world. What sort of damage are we talking about? Uh, an impact by a large asteroid has the capability of taking out our civilization and, and not many uh, worrisome threats uh, can make that claim. So it is worth some effort and uh, I think the effort is well underway to, to find these objects, to track them for 100 years into the future and see whether any of them represent a threat. NASA and U.S. Congress uh, became a bit concerned several years ago uh, that uh, an object of one kilometer size or larger that might hit the Earth could have uh, global catastrophic consequences. In the Catalina Mountains, north of Tucson, Arizona, I'm traveling with Ed Beschel, who tracks comets and asteroids for NASA using telescopes in the U.S. and in Australia. Is there a situation where you could find one a day before it gets here? Absolutely. Uh, now, in fact, actually, we did that uh, with the observatory that we're going to right now. We found an object in October of 2006 that we had, uh, that we discovered, uh, and it actually hit the Earth the next day. Fortunately, it was only three meters in size, about the size of a car. Yeah. So it came in over the Sudan desert, uh, broke up harmlessly. Okay, but luckily it was only three meters. That's right. <laughs> and that was one of the reasons that we were able to... About 70% of new asteroid discoveries are made here. In this particular case, this object's moving relatively fast. Ed and the other astronomers scan outer space for moving objects. Uh, every night we turn in about 6,000 uh, observations of asteroids. About 10 or 12 of them on a good night are near-Earth objects, and about three or four a week are what we call potentially hazardous asteroids, asteroids that get close enough to the Earth that we have to maintain a, a watch over them. A one-kilometer asteroid could throw up hundreds of billions of tons of soil into the upper atmosphere. That would effectively shade the Earth and change the climate, and it would make it very difficult uh, to grow food. Should we be concerned? We should be cautious, but like anything else, we should take prudent measures to try and eliminate as much of the risk as we can. 65 million years ago, in the age of the dinosaurs, an asteroid about the size of Sydney Harbour crashed into Central America.
turned day into night for a year, and almost everything on Earth died. The biggest threat now is an asteroid called Apophis. In 2029, it will pass so close to Earth, we'll be able to see it with the naked eye. What worries astronomers most is Apophis passing through a small corridor in space called a keyhole, where our gravity would change its orbit, sending it on a collision course with us seven years later. It really would be truly catastrophic if an object the size of Apophis hit. It would, it would, uh, it would be disaster for millions of people. Which is why Dr. Bruce Betts at the Planetary Society in Los Angeles is keeping a close eye on Apophis. So what are the chances of a big one hitting the Earth? The chances of a big one hitting the Earth are 100%. The key question is time frame. It's time to suit up, I guess. Uh, we got a big day. In the movie Armageddon, Bruce Willis blew up an approaching asteroid with a nuclear weapon. But in reality, that's the worst thing to do, because the blast would create smaller asteroids that could smash into Earth. So what, if anything, can we do to protect our planet? One way of uh, knocking an asteroid off its orbit and making it miss the Earth would be to slam into it with a hypervelocity bullet, a big spacecraft that hits it at tens of kilometers per second. Dr. Tom Jones is a former NASA astronaut. He fears nowhere near enough is being done to prepare for a doomsday asteroid. So we should have a book on the shelf that tells us the procedures for deciding when to deflect an asteroid, how it's going to be done, how much it costs, what kind of spacecraft has to be built. And then the world can then pull that plan off the shelf when it's necessary. Whose problem is this? Well, it is everyone's problem. It's a global threat because when we're confronted by a future asteroid impact, which is a certainty, uh, the process of deflecting that asteroid and moving it off its target, let's say it's Sydney, Australia, would be to drag it and its aim point across the globe until you miss the Earth entirely. And as you move that aim point, it's going to cross other major cities and regions and countries of the world, so it becomes everyone's concern. The clearest reminder of that danger is the imminent arrival of 2005 YU-55 on Wednesday. Scientists around the world will be keenly watching this close encounter. Then, all they have to do is learn to talk to each other. The future of the Earth may one day depend on it. So who's responsible for deflecting an asteroid? Well, if we do find an object that's on an Earth-threatening trajectory, then uh, we have to ask the question, uh, who do you call? Would the US be in charge? I don't know. Would the European Space Agency be in charge? Would the Russian Space Agency be in charge? So we don't know who's in charge? Yeah, uh, we're working on it. <laughs>